morning and welcome to The Well from the New York City Swedish Church. Our vision is that the divine can be known and experienced. And that phrase can be points to our conviction that the very higher power that holds the whole universe together is a relational being who wants a relationship with you, wants to know you, and wants to be known by you. And it's our conviction that that higher power is the God of the Bible. And so today, as we consider the spiritual path of Jesus, uh, if you feel stuck, if you're looking for something fresh, uh, or if you're just looking for encouragement, um, our hope is that as we consider his path, that there would be something on it that would encourage you and help lift your head up. Welcome to Sundays at the Well. Please stand. Good morning. We're so glad that you could join us this morning. Um, before we jump into our musical worship time, I want us to just take a moment to make some room for God in our hearts this morning. Uh, sometimes we come with a bunch of things that are, that are cluttering it up, and we don't leave any room for God to, to fill us with what he has for us. Uh, we, can, we can clutter up our heart with anxiousness, with stubbornness or pride, um, with our own ideologies and suppositions. So I, I invite you to consider something that you might want to empty out this morning to make room for God to fill you. And we actually have candles up here. So if you'd like, if you have something in mind that, um, that you want to empty out this morning, that you want to leave, uh, you can come and take a candle and light it on this and leave it up here on the altar to, to signify what that thing is for you this morning. So I'm going to give us about 30 seconds or a minute or so um, so you can, you can think about what it is um, that you want to leave to make room for God this morning.
seated kids you can go to your classes have a great time downstairs in the cafe the rest of you guys can be seated and uh, save some cinnamon rolls for us okay don't eat all of them um, welcome to the well my name is Aaron I'm the pastor here if you are new you just begin to interact with us um, would love to connect with you uh, you can just go to the screen uh, go to the link on the screen and you can just um, fill out your information give it to us that way we can keep you up to date with what's going on at the well throughout the week and on Sundays, and obviously a lot of things are flying fast and furious, uh, especially if you've been uh, tracking with us uh, for any amount of time. Um, I want to just take a moment to just acknowledge <clears throat> we're, we're in a new space, which is super cool. Um, I want to just thank uh, everyone who was doing the heavy lifting this past week. So, so Krista Chi, she quarterbacks everything at the well, and we had the scene involved in the movie. We have Jack, we had Allison, James, uh, Ke- Kenton, Johanna helped us scope out our next space in June. And we just had um, so, you know, so many volunteer hours uh, and staff hours. And I just want to thank you all um, for just making this um, happen. I, I wanna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk more about this and more about like, how we got to here um, in the sermon. But I do want to just give a little bit of history because um, we, we popped up here Um, February 2020, um, right before the pandemic, the well, we are modernizing ancient Eastern uh, Christianity. We're reimagining the Christian experience here in New York City and beyond in this this virtual season. And um, and one way we're doing that is in modernizing ancient Eastern Christianity, um, we are taking some of these Eastern Christian practices like silence and stillness and meditation. And so we started a pop-up meditation studio that many of you I've seen at virtually um, and in person. And so we we set up like 25 uh, meditation cushions. We pushed all the seats to the back, and we popped up here for four weeks. Then, then uh, COVID happened, and it was interesting, and it just started you know, the season that we're in. But we have an amazing relationship in history here in this space, and so it's so meaningful to, to find ourselves back here um, again. So um, there's been a really meaningful uh, history with um, Swedish people uh, Jesus in New York City. And so uh, in the early 1980s, 1840s, uh, there was a mission boat called the Bethel Ship in the New York Harbor that, was, that, was, that would be here to receive Swedish immigrants um, and just help them, you know, get, get rooted and get located here uh, in New York City and, and in America. 
Um, about later that decade, um, uh, like a, a Lutheran minister from Sweden came uh, and began cultivating what would become the, the, the groundwork uh, for the community here. And so about 10, 10 15 years after that, um, this congregation, before it was a congregation, began meeting um, at the Bari, uh, in, in the, near the Bari, and also, uh, let's see if I got Car Carlisle Street. And so about another decade after that, they officially opened up their doors in Water Street, uh, 1870s, and this congregation has been in New York City ever since. Uh, so, it's, so they're really neat, you know, we've not even existed for a year, <laughs> and they've existed for more than a year. And so it's, it's really neat to know that we are part of something bigger, not just in spirituality and in faith, but even just, you know, historically here uh, in New York. Now, in 1920, um, a wealthy woman who happened to be a daughter of a Presbyterian minister, of all people, um, uh, donated $250,000 to the New York Bible Society to build this space. Um, and they won an award, Josh Ryder will be interested in this one, um, a silver medal by the Fifth Avenue Association in category of best building in the area around Fifth Avenue. So, kind of a cool thing. Uh, in the 70s, the Swedish church um, bought this building and moved in and has, has been in here ever since. Um, they have a cafe on the first floor. It's open Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So if you're in the area, go support them. They have uh, the best cinnamon buns in New York City. And if you don't believe them, buy one and, and, and then tell them it, it doesn't taste good. Uh, so we want to support them. We want to be a good, a good presence here. You know, um, I was first introduced to this space by my wife, Erica. Her, before COVID, her um, company uh, was at 48th and Madison, just on the other side of Madison. And she told me one day, she's like, I was wandering around, and uh, I found this like random church, chapel, cafe. We should go check it out. So for a date afternoon, uh, we grabbed some coffee, and we went here. We thought, oh, this is like super cool. And then I started to invite more people, Krista, Loreen, and then I found out that other people um, in our congregation, in our community, had discovered the cafe and stuff like that as well. And so the, the chapel is open on limited hours. So if you're in the area and you just want some peace or some silence, come on up. Um, and also, you know, grab a cinnamon bun um, as well. But, but we, are, we are grateful to be part of the space, and we do, it's just neat to hear the different individual stories that have been um, trickling out ever since the news that we're meeting here at the Swedish church for six weeks. Um, so I'm going to, I'll explain, I'll talk more about this in the sermon, because it actually happens to be very uh, fitting for what we're going to be looking at with our, with our scripture today. Um, Okay, that's our, kind of our first announcement. Second announcement, um, we are uh, trying to encourage people, help each other to, to turn to one another, even with masks on in this socially distanced season. And so every month we have a social. Our, our, our uh, April social is going to be today. Immediately following this service, you can go downstairs to that first floor of the cafe. The cafe is going to be open to the public. I, I have no idea um, if anyone's going to be there or not, but um, the Swedish church is happy to have us yeah, take it over and just add some extra life here. And so we have our normal like lunch food and drinks and snacks like that, but also too, I do mean it, like uh, it would be so great to support them uh, and, and get some snacks uh, from, from them, especially if, as you need to head out. But um, so just a, just a reminder, our social today, so if you can stick around, whether it's 15 minutes or you wanna close the place down, that's, that's fine too. I'm sure Olaf who works down there uh, would not mind. Um, yes, his name is Olaf, so real Swedes um, run this place, it's amazing. Um, and you know, also too, like, um, obviously our nation is, is just reeling in this last week with all the sad events that have been happening. And we see so much fractured uh, parts of our society, you know, racially, politically, policy, and every other uh, area. If you can be fractured, we're discovering we are there. And so we want to be um, a community here in the city that is, um, that's not fractured and that it's actually a place, a community, where people across all the spectrums of life can show up. Doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter what you believe in, doesn't matter what your background, where you come from. Uh, this space uh, is open and welcome because Jesus loves everybody. Uh, he has zero prerequisite to come to him. And so we don't want to create any kind of prerequisite to, to, to interact in this growing community. So, um, so you know, as we, as we social to get, socialize together, in one sense, it's a statement saying, yes, our nation is hurting, our city is hurting. We're going to be a place of, of community, of listening, of refuge, of, of care for one another. So I'm excited to see this, this new and growing community just, just to continue to love on each other and face one another. Um, next Saturday, or this upcoming Saturday, however you, what date is it? Okay, the 24th, yes. Um, so this upcoming Saturday, we're having our, our monthly um, Bari uh, service volunteer. So every month we team up the Bari. 
we prepared 300 meals that are going to be served that Saturday uh, to the homeless and those in need. Um, afterwards, we're going to, we always do lunch. It's a chance for us to just um, share the experience. For some of you, you may have never volunteered in New York. Uh, it's a meaningful experience. Check it out. For some of you, you haven't volunteered during COVID. Uh, come check it out if you feel safe, but it's, it's, a, it's a great community that's forming. Um, we also have um, our, our very own Amy Lee, who works at the New Museum, right next door to the Bowery, has given us um, some tickets to, to tour their space. So she's going to give us a tour after, after, it's after lunch, right? Yeah, yeah after lunch, great. So, um, so there's still space. Sign up on our website. Love, love to see you there. Uh, lastly, I just want to thank everyone um, for financially supporting the well. Uh, you literally make what happens here Monday through, through Sunday happen, day in and day out. Um, so just thank you so much for, for your generosity and just keeping this, this community going. Um, now, last week, I mentioned that today we would start our, our campaign. It's a vision campaign because um, we needed new space. I told the story about Elegrin, our old space, last week, thinking that we would have six more Sundays. Turned out we had zero more Sundays. So, I'm so, so like, such interesting timing. Um, but the short of it, because I realized that some of us weren't there, um, is that um, in, two, in the fall of 2019, um, Elegrin, with uh, incredible generosity, gave us their space for free to use, which is so important because we're this small startup uh, church community. Uh, we don't have the budget or the, or the, or the funding to, to rent a place like that or anything because COVID just really um, stopped our fundraising. And so Michael Rossi, the CEO, out of his, the kindness of his heart, gave us that space and we used it all the way through last week. And we got a phone call, Krista and I did, um, right before Easter, that because Elegrin isn't going to be renewing their lease June 1st, we, were, we, had, we needed to leave June 1st. And that news was unexpected. We thought we'd have several months, maybe even the rest of the year there, so that some indicators indicated that way. And so when we got this phone call, we, th we thought, oh no, what are we going to do? Um, and so a few days later, we got a phone call out of the blue, completely unexpected, by um, uh, our favorite venue that we looked at before COVID. And they called us, they, their venue's right around the corner from here, and uh, they said, hey, we're going to open up, and we thought of you guys, and we wanted to know, would you want to rent from us starting June 1st? And the timing just couldn't have been crazier. And so we thought, okay, God, this is, this is the direction that you're moving us toward. Um, but I needed a little more evidence, so like, all right, so we, um, to, to do this well financially, uh, we need to raise $100,000. We're doing this short sprint campaign of raising $100,000 through June 1st, or, or pledging. And so um, I thought, all right, let me just let me give myself and let me just give this community some encouragement. Made a quick phone call right after that. And um, a very generous donor, doesn't live in New York City, but loves the well, supports the well, um, gave us a $20,000 match, um, dollar for dollar, so to, to encourage us. So the first $20,000 that we raise, we're gonna, he's going to match it. Uh, another twenty thousand um, dollars. So incredibly encouraging, knowing that like when 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 it's God's timing and when He's got your back, God He's gonna God's gonna be with you and just move forward in faith. And when you move forward in faith, you put your life on Him. If you stay, you know, in fear, and I totally get it too, because I'm I, I specialize in that as well. You're putting your life on yourself. I don't, you know, there's too many things above my head that I can't control. So I don't want it on me. I want it on God. So we begin to move forward in faith, and God showed up with twenty thousand dollars already for the hundred thousand dollar need. And then a donor last week um, heard, heard the vision and heard everything and said, hey, let me make this a, a nicer, rounder number. And so donated five more thousand so that we can say $25,000 pledge or uh, match to this $100,000 campaign. So just two asks as we start this campaign officially today. Um, number one, if you're part of the well community or if you've experienced any spiritual nourishment um, here, my ask would be that you would just pray and consider giving above and beyond what you were uh, going to be giving in 2021 uh, for this campaign. Um, the reason why we say above and beyond is because um, whatever you were going to marked out in your heart to give uh, this year, that goes to our operating budget. And we, we, don't, we want to try our best not to conflate the two because the operating budget helps the well survive day to day, week to week, month to month. But in the area of, 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 of New York City rentals, um, this $100,000 uh, vision helps keep this, this community um, going so we can be a place like what we're doing right now to invite people to uh, experience um, just this resource that, we're, that we've become of spiritually, emotionally, and personal care. And so, um, so if, if, uh, if, you could, if you've received any nourishment at all, would you just please pray over these next five, six weeks uh, what you could give above and beyond what you are going to be giving in 2021. Number two, the second ask is this. Um, I know that there are parents, 
There are brothers, sisters, there are uncles, it's your roommate Joe and your friends who love the well and would love to help if they just knew the need. And that's one refrain I get over and over the past couple of weeks. Um, thanks so much for asking. I had no idea that you guys needed help. I would so love to help. And so if you could just be thoughtful and prayerfully considering who in your, in your uh, community um, and in your circles uh, might be excited to, to help support the work that we're doing. Um, don't do it for me, but do it for this community that you're a part of uh, as we watch God continue to move forward um, together. So, um, so we're, we're excited. Now, how can you pledge? You can go to our website slash pledge, and there you can um, give us your information, pledge what's on your heart, and um, at that address too, you can also fulfill a gift um, between today and through the end of 21, which would be, which would be helpful. So thank you so much for your prayers and all this. Thank you for your excitement. Thank you for just your generosity in this. I am so excited to see what God is going to do um, uh, in this city and just the part that God is calling us to play uh, in that as well. So that's it for announcements. Um, now Silas Baird is going to come and read the scripture. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to uh, come, come back up and give us our sermon. Silas, come up. Morning. <clears throat> Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will, your, how long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Here is the reading of God's word. Okay, we are currently in the Easter season, and um, this historically uh, is called Easter Tide. It's a 50-day-long season uh, that celebrates the new life that comes from the resurrection of Jesus. And it's, a, it's a, an opportunity for us to consider um, what does the empty tomb uh, show us in terms of a new life that can bring about vibrancy and, and, and joy and hope. And throughout this, throughout this 50-day-long season, um, we're going to be following the church calendar like we've been doing from the very beginning when we launched, November, November 29th. The church calendar is a series of passages from, from the Bible that mark out each Sunday. And so in this 50-day season, we're going to be following the readings from the book of Psalms. And the passage today that Silas just read would have us consider the hope that you can have in the midst of material need. Okay, the, the hope that you can have in the midst of material need. And um, we can start right away with verse 1. The psalmist says, answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Okay, now that's a really broad prayer. It's a really broad posture. You could kind of, you know, pray that in any moment, any season that you're going through. That's, that's difficult. If you're a Christian, you probably prayed some version of that prayer a lot. If you're not a Christian, you've had that kind of feeling probably a lot throughout your life. Like, uh, can you help me out? Um, verse 6 of our passage shows us exactly uh, what context this passage, this prayer is coming from. And verse 6 says, Who will bring us prosperity when their grain and their new wine abound? Okay, so commentators understand that this, this distress call is in the face of material need. The crops, uh, the, the wine, um, their, their, their farms are, the land is barren. And um, they need rain. Okay, so they, they, have a, they have a material need. They, 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 they lack crops, and they're, they need, they're looking at the sky, and they need rain. And on a surface level, this passage looks like it's saying that the problem is their material need, or that their problem is that they need rain. But a deeper spiritual reading of this shows us that actually the problem is not their material need. The problem 
is what they do with their hearts in the face of material need. Okay, the problem is not that they lack rain. The problem is what do they do with their hearts in that season when, when they lack rain? And uh, we see in, in, this, in this passage what, what, the, what the people are doing. Verse 2 says, How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Okay, so that, that's the key here. Um, seeking false gods. Um, going after things that, that uh, over-promise and under-deliver. Things that, that you have no business uh, trusting in. And so commentators understand that this was written during a drought. And the people are looking at their lands, and they're saying, oh my gosh, what's going on? You know, it's May, June, July, August, nothing but sun. Crops are dry. No grain. No wine. The, the mouths of are, 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 are empty. The stomachs are empty. Uh, but not only that, their economy is gone. They have, they have nothing to sell. They, have, they can't buy anything. And so then they look over to their neighbors. And scholars understand, too, when this psalm was written, it was, it was during the time when Israel had a very storied history with their neighboring Canaanite god, Baal, which is a fertility god, a god of rain. And so they look over, you know, in light of their, their, their land being dry, they look over to their neighbors and they say, oh my goodness, look at this. They have, their, their lands, are, their fields are, are overflowing. They have one, Beaujolais Nouveau, oh my goodness, what's going on? Been in the barrel for eight days. And so they, they walk on over and they go, oh, mm, I see, Baal. My grandpa used to follow Baal. Huh, he clearly works. And then off they go. So something like that is happening. And this, the, the psalmist would really have us consider that that's been an experience that you, that you know, that you've experienced, and you're going to experience tomorrow. What do you do in the face of material need? What do you do in the face of, of personal financial need of, of, or need with your, with, you know, with your business or your career? What do, you, what do you do? Who do you turn to? What do you turn to? We all turn to something. Yourself, something else. Now, um, this passage would prescribe something and just invite us to consider it. And it's a counterintuitive solution. Verse 4, which is literally at the center of, the pa- of this eight-verse passage, okay, right in the center, verse 4 says, Tremble and do not sin. When you're on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Okay? Search your hearts and be silent. So the, the psalmist, very helpfully, very realistically, is giving us a real context. When you're in great material need, again, whether it's personally or whether it's with your business, when you're in great material need, What's the first thing you lose? Sleep. Okay, so he's pinging it right to, right to your bed. The very first thing that you, you emotionally and spiritually and existentially experience this, this great need on your bed. And, um, and that's, that's something to consider. So the Psalms are going right for, right for your, your context. The weight of your need is felt right before you go to sleep. Right when everything should be calm, you realize, oh, I'm actually not very calm. Uh, fashion designer Tom Ford, in a recent interview, um, opens up very, very honestly and helpfully when he says this. Uh, to be honest, I thought during COVID I would have time to work on my projects. I'm so, look, I'm so lucky. I have everything in the world. But I think everyone has felt a certain depression. It's been a very turbulent year. And I have a child at home who hasn't been to school in a year. So unfortunately, I've not felt as creative as I thought I was going to feel. And so in this difficult season, I go to bed. Maybe I drink some coffee and lie in the bathtub I, and, and probably watch way too much CNN and MSNBC and just make myself even more agitated. I try to get some sleep, which I never get. I just lie in bed and stare at the ceiling. Isn't that, isn't that true? Thank you, Tom Ford, for being so honest. Okay, that, is, that is the human experience. Right when your heart is supposed to be settled, you realize how unsettled you are in the face of material need. And so you churn and churn and churn and you start to scheme. You may be tempted to despair or to anxiety or to worry and the psalmist is saying, don't go there because it's, it's not going to lead to rest. It's going to make you more unrestful. The psalmist says, search your hearts and be silent. Okay, so real quick, those two thoughts. First, search your heart. Now that Hebrew word can be translated ponder in your heart. Okay, we see that idea in the New Testament when Mary ponders and treasures the news of, of Jesus, Jesus' birth. Uh, that Hebrew word can also be translated as meditate, which is very interesting. Meditate. What is meditation? Okay, it's growing in awareness. It's learning to be present. 
It's becoming aware of yourself and who you are. And the Christian angle would be become aware of who you are so that you can bring your real self to the God of the Bible and not some other worried self to the God of Baal. Bringing your real self to the God of the Bible through meditation, through, through increasing in self-awareness. And this is a very Christian thing. Uh, Matthew 6, in the New Testament, Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. Right? What's he saying? Get your mind out of tomorrow. Get your heart out of tomorrow. Get your mind and heart out of yesterday's worries. Stay present today. Be mindful, is what he's saying. Those who follow me should be the most mindful people. Grow in self-awareness. Be present in this moment, Jesus is saying. And it's the same chapter, Matthew 6, that Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer. And what does he say? Uh, Give us this day our tomorrow's bread. Nope. Right? Don't pray for tomorrow's bread. Don't pray for yesterday's bread. Pray for today's bread. So Jesus, is all, he's like the most mindful person in the world. He's all about staying present today. Okay? So don't worry about resources tomorrow. Just stay present today. Don't pray for daily bread tomorrow. Just pray for it today. And wait with an open hand and an open heart and an open mind. That's what he's saying. So meditate, the psalmist is saying. Be present today. Grow in self-awareness. You know, um, the psalmist also, uh, in Psalm 139, gives us a, a prayer to help us along in this. Search me and know me, O God. And that's something in our pop-up meditation studio we, we go to all the time. We start with the very first thing. I, I start with that personally, too. Search me and know me, O God, because parenthetically, I don't have the power or the ability to know myself. You know, if we're honest in those moments in which we're really worried, in which we're really concerned because of our, of our lack of material need and the sky is not opened up with some rain, you, yourself, and your heart are like ships passing through the night. You know, and your heart is so deep. Uh, it's unsearchable by your, by, on your own power and your own ability. Your mind, can, in those moments, can be so chaotic, you, you, can't, you can't settle down. So the humble prayer is, ah, search me and know me, God. What is going on? Because I don't even, I don't even know myself. And that's why therapy is a good thing. What is the, it's, it's helping you unwind yourself. It's helping you get connected to yourself. So you, we want to do something like that, absolutely. You want to be part of a good community, absolutely. But you also want to be just very honest with yourself and with God. And so when, when people who on the spiritual path of Jesus, when they grow in self-awareness, they're reminded that they never sit alone in, with their heart. They're always sitting with a higher power, with some more octane, the God of the Bible, who created you, who knows you, and will help you search your heart so that you can know yourself and bring that real self to God. Okay, the second thing the psalmist says is be silent. Um, the interesting thing, when you lose your sleep, is there anything but silence? And so there's a play on imagery here. Oh, you can't sleep, I'm so sorry, be silent. That's what it's, is what it's saying, right? Um, this chapter, Psalm 4, makes up part of the evening prayers historically. And so historically, throughout the day and into the evening, Christians would pray certain prayers at certain times of the day. And so Psalm 4 is, is part of the bedtime prayer historically, the, called Compline. And it's this last thing you pray before you go to bed. It's very interesting. It's very pastoral. Uh, it's, it's saying, look, I know you're in a hard season. And I know you're about to go to this thing called your bed, and you're going to be filled with worry. You can't help it. Be silent. God's got your back. God's walking with you step for step and even outpacing you a bit. And so we're reminded that um, when we are in those difficult seasons, we need direction, don't we? Well, as Larry King said, I've never learned anything from talking. So talk to God, like pour out your heart, be honest, and then, and then close your heart, close your mind, or silence it, I should say, and listen. Listening is an important part of the process in the season in which you need direction, especially when you're in great physical, uh, material, and financial need. So to put it all together, when, you're in, when, you're in, when you discover that you have great material need, the Bible is inviting you to grow in self-awareness, take the time it takes to do that, get assisted by God, search me and know me, O oh God, and then go into the presence of the God of the Bible and just listen. Just go into the presence of God of the Bible and just listen. Now our, our culture, that can, that's something that our culture could, um, should hear as well because our culture has a very different attitude when you're in trouble. It's, it's try harder, hustle more, baby, right? And there's something ex- inspiring about that. Like, wow, I can do anything. I should, I should work hard. And you should work hard. Absolutely. Give it your best effort, right? But then the humble person realizes there are, the most important things are way above your pay grade. Like asking the sky to rain. Okay, you can't control that. And so the humble person, the person that walks the path in the Bible, 
works as hard as they can, and at the same time there's a humility that says, but God, search me and know me, and I'm going to be silent. So search your hearts, ask assistance from the God of the Bible to, to grow in self-awareness, and then bring your real self to God, and then, and then listen. That, that's what this, verse, this passage is showing us. Now, the last two verses in this passage show us another way that we can be assisted besides simply listening to God. Um, verses 7 and 8 um, are, are testimonies, commentators point out. They're testimonies. What are, what's a testimony? From the biblical perspective, a testimony uh, are, is, is a reminder, either you remind yourself or someone reminds you for yourself, of God's goodness, of God's faithfulness, of God's presence in your life, which is exactly what you need in a season in which you have big question marks. You know, you need those reminders. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, theologian and pastor in the mid-20th century, says the Christian needs another Christian who speaks God's word to him. He needs him again and again when he becomes uncertain and discouraged. For by himself he cannot help, him, help himself for, and forgets God's truth. He needs his brother solely because of Jesus Christ. The Christ in his own heart is weaker than the Christ in his brother. His own heart is uncertain. His brother's heart is sure. And this is something we need. Now, um, the culture would say, no, you live in a world of one. But it's hard to reassure yourself in this world of one when your world is falling apart and the sky is not raining. What do you do? You've tried it before. Oh, self, take courage. I mean, that only goes so far. It's a good thing to do, but it only goes so far. Right? And there's something about in self-awareness in your meditation, you realize, ooh, actually, this is, I have, I am, I'm at the edge of myself. In fact, I've jumped over it. I'm just hanging on you know, to a rope over the cliff. And, and so there's something about actually um, seeking out strength and encouragement from somebody else. And Bonhoeffer is saying, in those moments of great need and great distress, your heart is, is, is trembling, is shaking. Turn to your neighbor whose faith in that moment is strong and let them have faith for you. Right? Let, let their faith be faith for you as you get over to the next season. Um, if it's a world of one, you have no, by definition, you have no one to turn to. And that's going to turn into a lonely world. Uh, and that's a really difficult life to live. And so the psalmist isn't saying, this is how you, sh you should, just giving you an invitation to consider this way. Consider the way of the, of the Bible, the spiritual path of Jesus. And you have so much encouragement. God will speak to you as you silence your hearts. And you have your, your, your neighbors, your Christians, to have faith for you. And so I find it interesting that in this passage that, that's about material need, it ends with a testimony. So I thought, today, I didn't know the testimony. And the testimony is this space right here, because the well's in a season of some, of some great need. So I thought, this, this can't be like wa wasted on us. Um, you know, I wrote the sermon series back in August, because we're just following the church calendar. I could not have timed it better for Psalm 4 to happen. In fact, I was kind of dreading preaching through the Psalms, because they're just, they're fun to read, they're not really, they're difficult to speak about. Um, but last week was perfect for the last week of Elegrin, and today is really fitting for, this, for the Swedish church. And so last week I, I talked about how Elegrin, the miracle story of Elegrin dropped in our laps. I'm not going to rehash that. You can look at our live stream for that. But, um, but to tell this story, it starts on, uh, on Holy Week. The, the few days leading up to Easter, Chris and I, we get this call. It says, you know, Elegrin's got to move out June 1st. you got to go, right? And so we were praying for a few days, and a few days after Easter, as I said, we get this random phone call out of the blue hey, we really need some help. Can you rent from us June 1st? Perfect, we need some help. And so this is just this, we're going to this space, again, right around the corner. We can't wait. It's going to be great. And, um, and then God gives us a little bit of money for this, for this vision campaign and to get some wind at our sails, and we're really encouraged. And I thought that was the end of the story. But apparently, it's not the end of the story. So, the, so that, was, that was on the 11th, Sunday, April 11th. So then the very next day, Monday, this past week, uh, Chris and I, we get a phone call um, at like 10, 10, 30 in the morning, and it's Elegrin saying, I'm so sorry, you'll never believe it, but the landlord uh, is being difficult, and um, we can't be there this Sunday through the rest of our lease. We're so sorry, there's nothing we can do about it. Oh my gosh, really? Um, so we make some quick prayers and some quick phone calls. And by the end of the day, about six, seven hours later, we're on the phone right before these guys are closing, like at five, six at night. We're on the phone with the Swedish church. And we think we found a spot in Soho to bridge us for six weeks. Um, but it didn't have any chairs. So we thought, well, that's not great. I don't know if everyone wants to stand for an hour. So we'll grab, so we have our meditation cushions from this space from a year ago. Let's grab them and people can kind of sit there. Vaughn, I know it's going to be a little tricky, but like, you know, 
we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do our best to sit there. And um, so when we're on the phone, we started talking to them. And you know, Krista is the you know the the, the million dollar question asker as she is. Um, you want her on your team. Um, but so she, we're on the phone. and We're saying, okay, so uh, can we get the cushions? No problem. We're we're open. Oh, in interesting. Um, is your chapel open? Oh yeah, it's actually yeah. You can, if you want to come pray here, you can. Is your is your congregation meeting? Not yet. COVID. Everyone doesn't live in New York City. No one's ready to come back in the city yet. Can we use it? <laughs> we just need six weeks. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me talk to the senior pastor. Shouldn't shouldn't be a problem actually. What are we talking about? I can't do it for free, like Elegrin. And, you know, because we have such a good relationship with them from last year, they gave us just, they, they have really blessed us, and, um, and we were able to worship in the space for six weeks. And uh, our treasurer got the news that, that night, um, Matt Howell, and he said, this is wonderful, but you can't afford it. <laughs> you don't have the funds for it. Um, so my wife, Jenny, and I will do you a good one. And above and beyond our ties, we're just going to fund the rental for the next six weeks here. So just out of the generosity of their heart, they're taking care of us here. And so God just has our backs time and time again. And so I tell that story because, you know, I know some of you are in a, a difficult material moment because, you know what, look, COVID's been a hard season. You've lost your job, your job's been cut in half, whatever it might be. You, went, you come up from water, you realize, oh gosh, the landscape isn't like what I thought it was. And I just want, let this be a testimony for you. Look, look around in here. Th this is a reminder that God is good, that God is faithful, that God's got your back. Um, let this be faith for you if your heart is, is kind of quivering or, 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 or shaking in, in this difficult season, whatever kind of difficult season um, you might be. Now, we want to, the Swedish church is blessing us like crazy, so we want to bless them too. Two ways we can bless them. Number one, we talked about the cafe. I would love to empty, empty them out every Sunday. Um, COVID's been hard on everybody, you know, and I know their cafe hasn't really seen a lot of people. So as you leave on Sundays, grab their, one of their cinnamon rolls. On their sign, it says, kind of like I'm in the movie Elf, it says, best cinnamon rolls in New York City. So you just got to go get it, right? Congratulations. Um, so, so get the cinnamon rolls, get a bottle of water um, as you leave, but not today. I mean, do it today, but stay here because we have our social downstairs. So get the cinnamon roll and eat it at our social. Um, the second way you can bless them, uh, these candles. So these candles aren't free. Uh, they cost a dollar, which is, you know, that's like really nothing. And yet it's meaningful because uh, they partnered with a soup kitchen on the Lower East Side. And so the money that goes from these candles goes to support the soup kitchen. And so if you think of it, um, you know, drop a dollar in that box. And what they do is they take that money and 100% of that money goes uh, to this program that they're supporting. And a soup kitchen is really important, of course, in this season. So if, if you're a student or you're in between jobs, I got you. I'll put the dollar in for you. But just um, it, let, as you light your intentions um, every single Sunday through the next six weeks, just be reminded that you're participating and you're coming alongside of the very, of the very love and the very uh, mercy ministry that they're doing here in the city as well. So we want to honor them. We want to we wanna bless them um, in their work as well. Um, you know, I was talking to Allison and Krista separately this, this week, and I was like, how are you guys doing? This is kind of a crazy season, crazy week. And they both gave the exact same answers, like, couldn't be more excited. You just got displaced, like yesterday, without any warning. Couldn't be more excited. And they, they took the words right, right out of my mouth. You know, when you experience God's providential, divine provision, you, what, does that, what that does for you is it grows such confidence in you. Not confidence in yourself, a, a greater kind of confidence, a confidence that transcends you. Um, because you know that God's with you. You know that God's for you. You know that God's walking forward before you and, and, and with you. And you know what that is also that we're experiencing is also spiritual experience. Experiencing God's divine provision is a spiritual experience. Right? You're literally sitting, whether you're a Christian or not, you're sitting in a moment that's a spiritual experience for the next six weeks. Because God dropped us in our laps and we had no business, we have no business even, even being here. And God's like, I got your back and I'm going to take care of you and then some. And that's part of the Wells vision, that the divine can be known and experienced. And we're trying to help you move past simply intellectualizing your faith. And by that I mean it's just, just keeping all the facts up here, you know, just, just keeping God safely in your mind. Because it's one thing to know that God is good, but actually you need to experience God's goodness. So every Sunday for the next six weeks as we sit here, you're experiencing God's goodness. And it's one thing to know that God is faithful. It's another thing to experience God's faithfulness. 
And so for the next six weeks, as you sit here, you're experiencing God's faithfulness. So just remember that, especially if you are in this hard season, like Psalms 4 says, in which you're waiting for the sky to rain. It's raining right now in this area of your life, and it's a reminder that God is a holistic God. God's got you, and he's showing you in this, in this category of your spirituality, your faith, or your church, he's got it covered here, and he's going to cover you elsewhere. So we're incredibly encouraged and excited about this. Um, and so, you know, as we, as we close here, um, this building, this church for us is a reminder that material need is not the issue for God. Material need is no thing for God. He's got that yesterday. He created the world. The, the issue for God is not the material need. The issue for God is your heart. What do you do in the face of material need? Okay, that's what God cares about. Of course he cares about your, phys- your, your material need, but he's got you covered. He cares about your heart. And what are you doing you know, with your heart? So we're in the Easter season, right? And we, and we want to look at everything through the lens of an empty tomb. And what the empty tomb shows us is that in your greatest need, which no one in this room is there yet, it's called your death, okay, your grave. In your greatest need, the, the one mountain you cannot summit, in your greatest need, the empty tomb shows you that God's got you, that God went before you in the grave. When you follow Jesus by faith, he's got your hand on you. And so friends, if he's got you in your greatest need, don't you think he's got your rent? You know, don't, think don't you think he's got your career? You know, it's not, he's not a genie. He can't just, I, I, want, I want to be a CEO of a, of a billion-dollar company. It might happen, but it, I don't know. It might not. It's not about the comfort, right? It's about God's faithfulness. And the grave shows you that God is faithful. And so if he's got you at your death, guys, he's, he's got you in, in, in your life. And so if you're troubled this morning for whatever reason, but spe- specifically if it's a, if it's a material need, uh, search your hearts and be silent. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'd like to invite you to a time of guided personal reflection. So wherever you're at, including at home on our live stream, um, I invite you just to close your eyes if you feel comfortable. But we close our eyes because when you shut out the, the physical material world, your heart and your mind uh, can just act a little differently and is more helpful for you. Um, and so it's in this moment that uh, I invite you to, in your heart, whether you're a Christian or not, you can do this however you feel comfortable. You can just sit here in this space, but if you feel comfortable, uh, to say in your heart, God, search me and know me, because I need help. I don't even know myself. That's a hard prayer to pray. It's a really humble prayer. But after you prayed it once, you can't wait to pray it again. So open up your heart to God right now. In this next minute, God, search me and know me, oh God. I'm in a really hard moment. I'm in a really hard season. I don't know what to do. Search me and know me, O God. And open up your heart to God and let God press into you. If anything is resonating with you right now, I promise you it's not me, it's not even the story, but it's God pressing into you. So let's just take this next moment in our silence and our stillness to open up our hearts to God. close, we can shift our hearts to a time of confession, which is a time to acknowledge all the ways in which our hearts turn to ourselves or to other things instead of the God of the Bible in in our time of need. 
again, the God of the Bible stands there with an empty tomb and says, you can, whatever your need is, you can trust me with it because I've given you my life. And so in this next moment, I just invite you to acknowledge just the different ways you turn from God to other things or to yourself. These might be really good things, and it's, it's, we're not saying to you know, be inquisitive, of course, look for resources, of course. But is your foundation the God of the Bible? That God is here waiting for you. And so let's just continue to open our hearts to God as we just acknowledge the ways in which we turn away from God to other things. with our eyes closed to a time of recentering. And we're reminded that we always need to center around something. Other people, ourselves, other things. And this is a time as we, after our confession, we remind our hearts that it's good and it's safe to recenter around God. And so as I read this piece of scripture for you, these are words of promise and, pro and words of hope words of joy and encouragement. So just grab onto a word or a phrase or an idea and whatever is encouraging you or resonating with you this morning, just open your heart to God wider and wider through that. Scripture says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, because the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and so in this last moment grab onto a word or a phrase or an idea that resonates with you or encourages you and just open your heart to God through it water and water now God, we thank you for this, this moment where we can search our hearts. And we're reminded that we don't even need to do all that in our own strength, but on the strength of you. So I pray that you'd give each person today insight into their own selves, 
When we sit in silence, we're reminded that we are often so far from ourselves. But when we sit with you, we discover that you are closer to our hearts than we are to ourselves. I pray that each person here would experience that. If not this moment, then at some point throughout this week. And in our silence, Father, we ask that you be faithful. You're telling us to be silent so that we can listen, so you need to speak. Speak in a way that we can hear and in that we're learning the tone of your voice. And you're giving us direction in that. And we know that because you're with us, we can have peace, like the scripture said. So grant us a deep peace, even in the midst of our need. That might even surprise even ourselves, a peace that we have no strength to muster up, so that we can know that the peace itself is a testimony that reminds us that you're with us. We thank you that you'll do that, and you've done it before. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to shift now to our time of communion, and it's a, it's a chance to respond to what we just heard. Uh, communion is um, a, a practice that the Christian church has done for literally 2,000 years, the first century. And it's in this moment that we believe that, that Jesus is spiritually present in a way that he is not in any other moment in your life. And so we just heard a sermon about God being there in the time of your physical, of your material need. And there's no better response to it than coming to God in a very material way with bread and with, and with cup. And it's in this physical way that we're reminded that God is with us in our lives in real ways. And so that's why we say this is for all those who put their hope and their faith and their trust in Jesus and call him Lord, you know, who are baptized members of a community that follows Jesus by faith. If this describes you, then this table is for you. Come with great joy and with great thanksgiving, um, especially if your faith feels weak and your spirit is down. And all the more reason to come to this table and be encouraged. Um, if this doesn't describe you and you're wrestling with Jesus and you're, 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 you're watching from afar, that's amazing. Uh, my encouragement would be to let the elements pass and instead consider following Jesus today. It'd be a great day to do so. Um, but if you are walking his path, no matter how strong or no matter how weak it is, then you're invited to this table. Um, so with that, let me pray for us. Uh, God, I pray that you'd be um, present with us today through your son Jesus. Uh, we, at, we, we set aside these ordinary elements of bread and cup for our spiritual nourishment and our use. And through that nourishment, would you send us out into the world to be true agents of change and hope and strength. Not our own, not our own strength, but in your strength. And it's because of that strength that we can have hope. So we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And having given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this in memory of me. At the same time, he took the cup, and having given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which has been poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. And we're reminded that as often as we eat this bread, and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So just a couple uh, socially distanced um, routines here. We have socially distanced communion. Um, so if you want to participate today, uh, my encouragement would be maybe the front three rows can go to the table up front. Maybe the back three or four rows can go to the table in the back in that hallway there. And just grab the, each, each station is kind of marked out for your dietary needs. So go ahead and um, we're going to take this next minute with music. And if you want to participate, you, uh, you're welcome to do so. Um, if not, you can just stay seated. Grab the elements if you are going to participate and then bring them back to your chair because we're going we're to partake together. Okay, so we'll, uh, no rush. We'll let like a minute of music or so go by. You can just go to your stations now.
All right, the body of Christ, take and eat. And the blood of Christ, take and drink. <clears throat> Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this chance of spiritual nourishment where we can uh, stand uh, next to you, with you, and with one another. And it's in partaking this moment that we are acknowledging a humility that is not easy to, which is that we need strength and we need help. And we thank you that you're in your grace, you, you come to us. And you don't make us ascend to you, you come down to us and then you lift us up. So we ask that you lift up our hearts and our heads today uh, into your presence. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, for our last song, you can um, remain seated or you can stand, uh, whatever you feel comfortable with. of Psalm 4 in Psalm 37 in the Passion Translation verse um, start, verse 7 it says quiet your heart in his presence and pray keep hope alive as you long for God to come through for you so um, we're going to sing those words together back to God as our third song
faith this morning as we sing the words that we will feast on your faithfulness if we wait on you, if we quiet our hearts in your presence and keep our eyes fixed on you and who we know you to be. We thank you for the, the testimonies shared uh, this morning and we just pray that, uh, that it would sink down deep, um, that the words that we sang, we will feast on your faithfulness resonate deeply with us this morning as we go. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. Um, thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. If you'd like prayer, you want to process anything you heard, uh, Gail, our prayer team leader, will be just kind of mingling in the front here for the next five, ten minutes after service. So just come on up if you, if you want to talk to someone or you want prayer. And also, too, the music will just kind of be on in this space, so you can... Um, just linger here if you'd like and just kind of make it, you know, your time, uh, you know, after the service. Um, and just a reminder, we have our social um, right downstairs in the first floor in the cafe. And so as you go down the stairs, just take a left instead of going out the door. And um, you'll see the Wells table of food and drinks and snacks. Um, and also get that cinnamon roll um, as well. And, you know, if you've begun just interacting with the well, you're new, my encouragement would be, especially if you feel stuck or if you're looking for something new and different this season, just, just track with us, walk with us for the next 
uh, 50 day season of Easter and just see if it helps, see if it encourages you, see if you meet God here in fresh and new ways. A lot of you have uh, taken me up on that and it's just been an honor and it's been a lot of fun to be walking with you. Um, so just, just consider that. But now as you go throughout the rest of your day and the rest of your week, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in God so that you might overflow with hope as you see God in your material need to the power of God's Spirit. Have a great morning. Go in peace.